What's going on Kaleida fans? This is Barrett with Espresso Outlet. I've been getting the question of how do I inspect my drum as well as clean the inside of my rose chamber. It's actually fairly easy. Go to the box or find where you have kept your Allen keys that came with your roaster. If you're wanting to remove the drum, you'll want this long yellow handled one as well. To begin with, I recommend taking out your trier. It can be nice to leave this in. If you're afraid that it might slide out as you're working on it, you can set it aside. You'll probably want to put that chaff collector back in to collect uh, some of the chaff and beans that are stuck inside your roaster. So to begin with, there's kind of these stars on the side. And if you look through the stars, there is a screw in there. So begin by loosening these two screws. I know on the M6 it has two screws as well. I've not opened up the M10. This will just loosen your heat shield from the front of the roaster. Be careful. Uh, you kind of have to slide it downward and pull it out. Next, there's four screws on this outer plate and you'll see more screws in that but we only want to remove the four that are holding this plate on. If you have the M6 I believe it has more screws. Before we do that on this side there is your bean temp thermoprobe. Unclip the spring and kind of press in on this outer bushing and pull your exhaust temperature pro or this is your bean temperature probe out. So next, let's loosen these four screws. I recommend probably keeping these top two slightly in, just so that this faceplate doesn't completely fall off as you loosen the rest of the screws. Note, these screws have little crush washers where your heat shield did not. I forgot to take my little green extension off, hopper extension. So with the last screw, we can take the face plate off. Now you have access to your drum, as well as cleaning the back of this face plate. You will usually get quite a bit of buildup down here. Uh, I'd probably recommend cleaning it and making sure it's nice and dry before we reinstall it. So next let's go and look at the drum itself. If you wish to take the drum out, get your yellow handled Allen key and carefully reach inside to loosen the drum screws. There are some crush washers, so if they fall off, make sure they're not getting stuck in the grooves of your drum. With that removed, you can take your drum out. You can see that we had a stuck bean. I'm gonna move you a little bit closer so you can see the inside. Inside you can see that we have some buildup that we need to take care of. Uh, it comes off for the most part pretty easily. At this point you may want to put your chaff bin back in. I recommended taking it out before so it didn't accidentally just fall off or become damaged. But now that we want to collect some of this chaff, let's go ahead and put it back in. And if you have some sort of a brush, you 
I do want to note, you can see up at the top, there's heating elements. You'll want to make sure not to damage those by hitting them. Uh, they shouldn't become damaged easily, but just be aware that they're there. So the inside of our roast chamber is, I'd say, very clean. I will point out while we have it open that at the very back right here, this is your environmental temperature probe. So if you're curious where that's at, you can see it on the inside. You can also take it out similar to the same way that we did on the front, except you need to remove the rear case. We'll go over that another day. Since we have the roaster opened up, I guess to begin with, there's some of the chaff that we cleaned out of the inside of the roast chamber. And we have our drum itself. So you'll want to inspect it, make sure that there's nothing stuck. Um, like right here is where the two seams come together. So there is this like, a little bit of a bump, but that's not like a true disforming of the metal. You're gonna wanna look for like very big disformed metal. So everything here looks good, and we're just gonna reassemble it the same way that we took it apart. For the reassembly, we have a slightly different view so that you can see from a different angle. So there is it is a key drum, so you'll want to look in the back and you'll want to line your drum up with that keyway. And then we're going to put the three screws back in. I'm going to recommend just getting them tight, but not tighten them down. And then we will tighten all three in a circle here in a minute. We don't want our drum to get tightened a little bit crooked and then it wobbles. So you'll want to brace the edge of your drum just a little bit and start to tighten these three screws down. Get them nice and snug, you don't need to break anything. Next we have our cover. I'd recommend wiping some of this buildup off you can see the chute operation. I think it's a really neat operation on the chute, as well as your trier. This is where your bean probe goes and your dump chute. So to reinstall that, let's start by aligning the holes. And let's get a screw started. Actually, this is the wrong screw. Make sure to use the screws with the crush washers. Again, we're just gonna get these tight and then we'll tighten them all four at the end. Snug them down. And now our front plate is back on. Before we put the heat cover on, you'll want to reinsert your bean probe and attach it to the metal clip just to keep it out of the way. 
Last, we will put our heat shield back on. This roaster does get very hot without it. If you would like, you can kind of position your screws, or at least one in ahead of time. That might help you get it on a little bit easier. Oops, did not help me. This part can be tricky. Well, let's take this off again. Boy, these are slippery. You may have to pull out on this heat shield just a little bit. It does bend just a hair. You don't need to bend it a lot, but you might need to kind of spring it out into place and make sure it's nice and level. So with that back on, we can put our trier in the front and our green bean extension on the top. And then slide our chaff collector into the side. So this was pretty much a real time video. It didn't take very long. It shouldn't take you longer than 15 or 20 minutes the first time that you do it. About the hardest part for me on the two times that I've opened the M2 and the M6 has been putting this front cover back on. And it's mainly just because you can't reach those screw holes very easily or see them. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps you clean your Collider Roaster and inspect it. I recommend doing it well, as often as you can because it's gonna keep your roaster running longer and cleaner. Uh, you don't need to do it after every roast, but it's still gonna be a good idea to maintain your equipment. So. Thanks again.